AI does not work. Or to be more precise, works poorly when trying to accomplish larger tasks that require many steps. Imagine that we have a product requirements document or a PRD that requires some major development or a major refactoring. We might have spent hours or even days defining that PRD and even more time defining all the tasks such a PRD should contain. Once we have it all set, we can start writing the code that implements that PRD and that is likely to take even more time. That situation presents one problem and one opportunity for improvement. First, we should be able to speed up creation of the PRD and the tasks behind it. We can do that part with the AI agent already, as long as we are willing to create elaborated prompts. As such, that is not a problem, but rather something we can improve. The problem, however, is that AI would likely fail to implement all those tasks in one go. Since the context is limited, agents eventually hit those limits and start forgetting what they did. That's bad, since that means that they would not be able to continue working on latter tasks effectively, or even worse, that they would start outputting random garbage that is unrelated to what they already did. Another problem is that if we start a new session, everything, and I repeat, everything is forgotten, so it's hard to continue where we left. There are other issues and they all boil down to inability of AI agents to work well on larger tasks. There's a solution though. There is a project that we can plug into AI agents as an MCP server and that will take care of those issues. It can create PRDs and the tasks, orchestrate AI agents, keep track of what is done and provide relevant information about the tasks that are still pending. That project is Taskmaster. It acts as a project manager of sorts by organizing, researching, expanding, prioritizing and shipping tasks. It provides a permanent context, it is free and it's open source. It's awesome. If you adopt it, it will change the way you use AI. We'll take a quick break for me to introduce you to Blacksmith, the sponsor of this video. Here's the story. No matter which AI agent you use, you will eventually push code to GitHub and that will trigger GitHub actions that will build binaries, run tests, make a release and do whatever else workflows normally do. That's where Blacksmith comes in. It makes your GitHub actions much faster and cheaper at the same time. And all you have to do is change a single line in your workflows. A single line for faster and cheaper workflows that make them run on high performance CPUs instead of GitHub's old servers. On top of that, they made significant software optimizations that allow you to get much faster Docker builds and faster collocated cache. Unlike some other solutions you might hear about here in this channel, this one is truly a no-brainer. Sign up, add that single line to your workflows and enjoy faster GitHub Actions workflows at much, much lower price. Big thanks to Blacksmith for sponsoring this video and now let's go back to the main subject. Here's what we'll do. We'll use one of my hobby projects and try to write tests for it. That's something I should have done from the start, but I didn't because I was lazy and now I am ashamed. The only way I can remove the stink of that shame is just to do it. The problem is that even though it's not a big project, I expect those tests to be measured in thousands of lines of code and that's not something that can be done fast. I need to figure out which testing tools I will use. I need to write mocks and stubs. I need to write helper functions. I need to write tests themselves and probably do quite a few other things that are not self-evident from the start. Actually, the problem is that I want to do all that, but I'm still lazy. I don't want to spend days on that alone. Now, I cannot cut corners since that would bring back the shame, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's a pickle, isn't it? I tried doing all that in cursor by instructing its agent to write all the missing tests. And that was a disaster. It started fine. Great. But soon after, a bit later, it started forgetting what it did and the outcome was not what I wanted. It reached the point where I got so disappointed that I threw it all away. This, this video 
is my second attempt to accomplish the same outcome, but this time I will be using Taskmaster to help me out. Taskmaster should work with GitHub Copilot, Windsurf or any other AI agent you might be using. My current preference is Cursor, so that's what I will use today and you are free to try it out with something else. Your choice. The process and the results should be similar, if not the same. Now, I already added Taskmaster entry into Cursor's list of MCP servers, so Cursor now knows that Taskmaster is there, but before we start using it in this project, we need to instruct AI agent to initialize it. And there we go. We can see that the agent started calling MCP tool. That's the proof that it is using Taskmaster MCP server when it needs to work on PRDs. And that's it. That's all it takes to set it up. And now we can create a PRD. We'll instruct it to learn what this project is about and write a PRD. In this particular case, the goal is to write tests for all the code in this project. The tests should be unit tests that do not make any interaction with external APIs. There is no need to mock file system operations. And finally, we want the agent to create taskmaster file scripts tests.md. Consider all that as a high level objective of what we, or in this case, I, want to accomplish. Without Taskmaster, we would probably spend quite some time defining all the details we might take into the account before we start working on this task. I could easily see myself spending a few hours thinking, deep thinking through it and a bit more writing it down. Taskmaster did that for us in a couple of seconds. Now, you might think that I'm exaggerating that you would assemble the whole testing plan in a blink of an eye. I bet you do. I bet that's what you think. And you might be right. Now, we'll see whether that is really the case later when we take a look at what Taskmaster did. So actually, what did it do? It examined the project structure, it looked at all the relevant source code, and it created the PRD. Easy. And the end result is that we got a short overview of the project, the description of the current state of the project, and more importantly, most importantly, the core requirements we might want to implement. Those requirements are test coverage goals, testing approach, mock requirements, and test organization. Further on, we got specific test requirements that go into more details by listing CLI and configuration testing, YouTube functionality testing, email notification testing, workflow and state management, and utility functions. But that's not all though. It also defined testing tools and libraries, the implementation strategy, the success criteria, and what is out of scope. That thing, what you see on the screen, looks like a serious PRD. But we should not take it for granted. Like with most outcomes of AI, we should not take it as is, we might want to review it and modify it manually or with further help of AI until we reach the state we are happy with. Now, I will not do that today for the sake of brevity, but you should not take that as recommendation to trust it blindly. Always, and I repeat, always review and if needed modify anything, anything AI produces. Still, we are only starting. There is much, much more coming. After a couple of additional calls to Taskmaster MCP and a few commands, it created tasks.json file, which contains the tasks we might need to perform to implement that PRD. There is one for setting up testing infrastructure, another one to create mock interfaces, then one to implement utility function tests, and so on and so forth. There are 15 tasks in total, each with the title, description, the status, dependencies, and other information we might need to implement that PRD. If we would stop it here, right here, and switch to do everything else manually, the outcome would already be amazing. It would take us at least a day to do such detailed planning of what we should do. Taskmaster did it in no time. There's more though, much more. Now we can start the actual work of implementing all those tests, and that's where Taskmaster really, really shines. You see, we could have done all that without us masturbating writing prompts to whichever AI agent we might be using. It would take us more time, but we could still do it. What comes next is what makes Taskmaster fully, truly, amazingly amazing. Right now, there is no AI agent that could implement all those tasks. Every one of those currently available would eventually get confused, run out of context space, or simply freak out. 
AIs are not yet good at performing large and complex tasks with many dependencies. They are great for relatively short tasks, but not so good at maintaining the context in cases when we work on bigger problems that take longer to solve and require large context. And that is where Taskmaster comes in. Think of it as an orchestrator of AI agents. It keeps internal memory of what was done and it instructs agents what to do and when to do it. If you would compare AI agents with containers that do one or a few things very well, we could compare Taskmaster to Kubernetes, which orchestrates those containers and all other resources we might need. Taskmaster is an orchestrator of AI agents. Okay. Now, we can also see that a separate file with even more details is created in the tasks directory. That's the context that AI will need to perform each of the tasks. We could initialize the orchestration of the work we need to do with the taskmaster set status command suggested to us by the agent. But I find it tedious to start running commands directly when we are in the AI agent chat. So let's continue chatting by asking it, what is the next task that I should work on? After a few calls to Taskmaster MCP, it figured out that we should start working on the first task. Well, I, I could have figured that out myself. We should always start with the first task, right? Well, it gets more complicated later with dependencies between tasks. Nevertheless, starting with the setup of uh, testing infrastructure does sound like a good first task. We can even see that there are five subtasks involved. So Taskmaster broke it down into smaller pieces and it is waiting for us to tell it to start working on that task. And right now, this is the moment. This is when Taskmaster starts the orchestration. It changed the status of the task to in progress and it instructed the agent what to do to implement it. After a while, it changed the first subtask to in progress, gave additional instructions to the agent, which in turn created a bunch of new files, and finally changed that subtask to done. That, I don't know how to call it, dense, continued for a while until all the subtasks of the first task were completed, and we got the summary of everything done so far, instructing us that if we are pleased with the progress so far, we can continue working on the next task. Now, the important note here is that you should not do what I just did. You should not trust it blindly as I did. You should inspect everything it did and either accept the changes or provide additional instructions if needed, or in some cases intervene by making changes to the code manually. AI is great but not perfect. Do not trust it, at least not yet. Okay, what should we do next? Now we can, let, let's say, for example, let's get the status of the progress by, let's say, asking it how many tasks are left to do. And in this case, we can see that we completed one out of 15 main tasks. We can also check what's the next task we or I, in this case, should work on. And look at that. That would be the task to create mock interfaces. It is a high priority task, probably because those mocks are required for the actual test that will be created later. So what should we do next? The logical next step is to instruct it to start working on that task. And there we go. Now it is working on the next task following the same pattern. Okay, that's, that's probably enough. I will not bore you going through all 15 tasks. I'm sure that you get the point. The only thing that I will say is that when I did the same exercise, for real, not as a video, it took me a few hours to complete them all, with most of the time spent on reviewing the work, getting additional instructions, and making manual changes in cases it uh, messes it up. It would take me days to do the same thing, alone. And probably still much longer without Taskmaster. I think that that's it for the demo. Uh, I'll let you explore MCPJSON to see how Taskmaster is set up on your own. Let's talk about pros and cons, or Taskmaster in general. Taskmaster solves a known problem when working with AI agents. When working on a larger set of changes, we often run into limitations imposed with the size of the context. More importantly, when working on something bigger, we might not finish it in one go, and agents can easily get confused if we start a new session. Taskmaster allows us to split, actually no, it allows us to define the work in the first place and then to split that work into smaller tasks and to orchestrate 
what the agents do when working on all those tasks. It is a must for anything but relatively simple and small changes we might be doing. Now, all that is not to say that we could not have accomplished the same without Taskmaster. We could. But that would require a lot of additional work. Taskmaster makes tedious work easy. So, all in all, Taskmaster is awesome. It quickly became one of my favorite tools and I do not have anything negative to say about it, except a word of warning that applies to everything related to AI. Do not trust it. Do not trust it blindly. Review and if needed, modify the PRD and the tasks it creates. Uh, it is not perfect and it certainly cannot read our minds. It is a great tool, but like any other bear related tool, it, we need to be on top of it. Do not run it blindly. Do not enable auto mode. As long as you are in control of it at all times, it is amazing and I strongly, strongly recommend it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.